Hey everyone, welcome to One Hour a Day, the channel where I spend just one hour each day learning a difficult skill. I'm Justin, and this is week four of learning to play chess blindfolded. This week was by far the most productive and successful I've had so far. I played a beautiful 41 move game in my head that ended in a checkmate, and there was no mistakes. And then at the end of the week, I played my first games blindfolded against somebody else, so stay tuned for that. So this week I've been recording each game that I play in my head during my practice, and as you'll see there were some great games and some not so great games. I noticed about halfway through the week that my progress was slowing and that I was sort of practicing the same way each day. And while these mental playthroughs were really challenging at the beginning and each day got me better at them and got me a lot of results, I was sort of just coasting through it now and I was in a routine Right, I would get my coffee, I'd play through the same way each day, and I knew my growth was being slowed by this because I wasn't being challenged the same way I was at the start, but I wasn't really sure what to do differently. And as you'll see later in the video, I had to figure out how to switch up my practice and do it differently so that I didn't run into this plateau. But before we go any further and how I had to switch up my practice routine, I want to show you guys this game I played in my head earlier this week. It was phenomenal and it was the first full game I finished with Checkmate, so check it out. So here's the game, I'm playing as white, and I don't know why I keep saying that, because I'm playing as both colors, but I'm just playing from white's perspective. And so anyways, just to start up, you might notice with this opening that it looks pretty familiar. That's because I showed it in the last video. Uh, this is an opening I use a lot, it's called the Scotch opening, and like I said before, I use it because it trades off a lot of pieces quickly, and I really like that. And anyways, moving ahead, I make this really nice knight move right here where black's queen can't take the knight because uh, white's knight defends or white's queen defends it and because the king is under check from the knight and also the knight is attacking the rook this is called a fork black is forced to move the king and i get a free rook and sure i lose the knight but that's considered a good trade and now i check black's king again with this bishop and so it moves away and then this move here, it's called castling, where you can move your king and bring a rook out simultaneously. It opens up an attack on black's king with the rook, so black defends. And now here I traded the rook for the bishop and the knight, which is also considered a good trade. And then black desperately tries to get the queen in, but it doesn't matter, checkmate is coming. And with this bishop check, black's only legal move is to move the king backwards, and or just sacrifice the queen. And here, after I take uh, the bishop again with check, again, black's only move is to move the queen into play. And I could have taken with the queen, and that would have been checkmate. But I didn't realize it at the time, and I was just sort of fixated on this bishop move, because I had never done this before. And by moving the bishop away, it opens up what's called a discovered check on the king with black's queen, where you can see here. And that's checkmate, uh, black doesn't have any moves, and all of these squares are covered. And that's it. After that game, I was feeling really good about this challenge, and I was pretty confident that within a week or so, I was going to be able to finish learning it. But a couple of days later, I started experiencing some more difficulties. I was still really struggling with the end games and trying to figure out what a good move would be. And I just want to show you guys a game I played a couple days after that last one, where I was tired and I had a really hard time focusing, and it was overall just a really poorly played game. And I want to show you guys this game because I think that we can learn just as much from our setbacks as we can from our successes. So here it is. So here's the game, uh, playing against white here again. Uh, this was a couple days later. And you can see it starts out okay, but like I said, I was pretty tired and the mistakes are just going to start rolling in. So up until this point, everything was fine. And then it was right here where I thought that this bishop was actually here and that the king was in check and that happened not to be the case so what happened was I tried to block it with this pawn and then I put the king in this was actually a good move I put the king to check with the queen to buy my bishop time to escape now I could have just you know moved away and or rather moved away there because I thought it was right here um, and it would have been fine, but this was just sort of a move that bought me some time So the king's in check he has to move first and then only now I move the bishop away And again, I thought it was here and that I was moving to this square So here I thought I took the bishop with this uh, with this bishop and Obviously not but the king would have recaptured and then white put black into check there 
and then a couple more moves and this was as far as I got so it was really short I probably didn't even get halfway through the game and it was just one of those days you know at the end of the week I finally played my first games against somebody I asked my cousin to play and he's about the same level as me a week before I started this challenge we actually played two games and we both won once and so to make sure he was playing at his best there was ten dollars on the line for if you won and before you see the games, leave a comment whether or not you think I won or lost. Alright, here we go. So I played two games blindfolded against my cousin, and in the first game... Alright, uh... Knight on f6 captures. Your knight. Knight on f6 captures. Okay, yeah, yeah. Knight captures. Oh! Five, oh, gotcha. oh, there goes my, uh... Queen. Queen. So I played one game blindfolded against my cousin, and I was prepared to win. I'm definitely not ready, but let's do it. Alright. I... I'm gonna start with... E4. E4. Yep. I'm gonna play... I'm gonna match you, go to E5. Okay, I'll play F3. Knight, knight F3. Do you mean c5? What? Wait, no, no, not c5. Bishop to c4? G4. Oh my god, oh. you messing up. Sorry, g4. G4. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's right? okay. That's okay. I'm not used to this. That's okay, that's okay. I understand. You're going, so you're going for that queen, that queen again, eh? No. No. I'll play bishop to e2. My pawn will capture your bishop on g4. Alright. My rook is gonna capture your rook at h1. Knight captures pawn at c3.
So after I lost both games, I was feeling kind of down. I thought I was going to do better. But shortly after, I started to get excited because I now knew where I needed to focus my practice. So moving forward, I'm going to switch up how I practice and focus more on the end games. And I'll probably just try to get to the end as quickly as I can in like five minutes and then spend the rest of the hour just focusing there and seeing if I can figure out sort of why I'm having the difficulty there. So now that I know how I'm going to be practicing next week, I set up a couple of games for the end of that week just to make sure that the learning I'm doing is going well and that I'm getting better at end games like I should be. And those games are going to be against a really strong player, especially compared to me. And here's my take on how those are going to go. Мы тебе нашли достойного противника. Я приглашаю в эту студию 12-го чемпиона мира по шахматам, международного гроссмейстера, заслуженного мастера спорта СССР Анатолия Карпова! I'm really looking forward to playing that game next week. And with that, that's the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching and making it to the end. If you have any suggestions or feedback for next video or for future topics I could learn, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. So I'll see you in the next one, later.